Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Shalom Lawson with your daily update. Coming up on today's bulletin, commuters and combi drivers hail a clampdown on touts and rank marshals. Vulnerable children at a flat in Bulawayo are starving as the food assistance program ends. A Harare-based musician is taking on a new career as a journalist. And in sport, a junior football tournament kicks off in Bulawayo. Urban commuters and combi crews have hailed the recent clampdown on touts and rank marshals, saying it has brought order at most commuter pick-up points in the city. Jeffrey Moyo gives us the report. The summit has retained at commuter omnibus ranks in the capital following a police crackdown on Iran rank marshals and touts who were causing chaos at the ranks. ATV spoke to some overjoyed combi drivers and commuters in the capital who yelled the recent crackdown on rank marshals and towers. The situation is not the same as the young people. I don't know how many people are married, but I don't know how many people are married. I don't know how many people are married. Combi crews and commuters said even if the rank marshals may return, they will not tolerate their presence and their road behavior. Endings for combi operators have improved significantly following the launch of a crackdown on towels and rank marshals. Other combi crews castigated the beatings that were administered on rank marshals, saying negotiations could have been better. Lamini said there was supposed to be a smooth transfer of roles of many bus ranks to the local authorities. Reporting for ATV, I'm Jeffrey Moyo in Harare, Zimbabwe. Vulnerable children at a flat in Bulawayo are starving after a food assistance program funded by a German organization ended. Eunice Ferizai reports on the plight of the children. Orphans and vulnerable children at Buromo Flats in Bulawayo are facing serious food shortages after a German donor put out recently. Buromo hostels are a cluster of dilapidated and overcrowded apartments in the poor suburb of Mzilikazi. Touched by the plight of the children, some concerned residents mobilized money to buy food for the distressed children. ATV caught up with the group members, which is now seeking ways to support the orphans. group. Mama <laughs> An official from Help Germany who spoke to ATV off camera said funding was cut as resources for the program had dwindled. He said donor funded programs needed to be self sustaining as it was impossible to fund a program for a long time. Affected children spoke to ATV about the challenges they are facing. 
ukubhadala esikolo lokuncedisa abazali bami bayagula ugogo namajayi babancedisayo lesikolo ngikuyule esquare de se 40 dollars mfuna kule school fees abazali bami ba babhubha bona most of the homes at Buromo are child dated and some of the children are HIV positive and have no one to support them. For now there is no solution in sight as the social welfare department is also broke and cannot support the orphans. Reporting for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. A Harare-based musician has swapped his guitar for a pen after attaining a degree in media studies. Jairo Saonyama went to meet him. Singular musician Joseph Garakara of the hit song Ijga Banana is said to become a journalist after he completed a degree in media studies with a local university. The 48-year-old musician who is also a primary school teacher attained the degree from the Zimbabwe Open University. In an interview, Garakara told ATV why he studied media. I mean, in this is the reason why he went off the musical radar for a time so that he would concentrate with his studies. The musician is expecting to join any media house soon. Meanwhile, the musician who made history with the song Ijga Banana in 2006 has released a new album. With the musician aging, one wonders whether he will do much in the media fraternity. But who knows, maybe the musician is what it takes to become a successful journalist. Reporting for ATV, Harare, Zimbabwe. A junior football tournament roared to life in Bulawayo with teams drawn from around the city battling it out to clinch the top prize. Melody Mugudi captured the action for ATV. The Junior Football City Council Cup kicked off recently with various teams playing matches at Mzilika's grounds in Lawayo. Four female teams and four male teams battled it out to get a slot in the finals, which are penciled for the 30th of this month. In the female side matches, Privilege Mobeti, who scored two goals for what 14, was ecstatic about her performance. I can't even say just because I was very excited, just because I managed to take my team to the next round. What 14 coach Mtanda Zontlov was also excited about their victory. Very, very excited. And uh, those two goals, uh, with those two goals, we managed to go through to the next round, which is the, the semi finals, were quite, quite happy. In the men's matches, what 14 bet what 25 4 in the penalties after a deadlock. Watch 24 supporters broke into celebration after their victory. The coach of Ward 14 was optimistic that his side would make it to the semi finals. On behalf of the players, I think they're excited. It was the first time for us to reach this stage that are now in the semi finals. For the past years, normally it was like first round, second round, we put it out. But this time, we're in the last four. And I'm very, very excited. 
A total of 29 wards participated in the first round, 16 of them qualified for second round, and only four teams are going to compete in the finals. Reporting for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening.